Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sissy Brown with 92Q, the Kenny Smooth Morning Show, and I do middays on 92Q. And I'm Candace Jones. I'm the director of marketing here at NAMAM. So welcome to the National Museum of African American Music. We are so excited, and I know you guys are so excited. And you know, whenever you have things like this, you walk out, and you're like, huh. How many of you are New Edition fans? Okay, we'll see when we introduce them, because <laughs> we just met them, and baby. They are everything that we have loved for the last 40 years. And we're Amazing. so excited to be talking to them today. Yes, absolutely. And I know you guys are excited to see them. So without further ado, let's give it up for Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, Mike, Ralph, and Johnny. New edition! New edition! I really feel like all of you are family and cousins, especially me and Mr. Brown here. That's that's my first cousin, twice removed right there. So we may he said, hey, cuz, but you guys, 40 years. Thank you so much for giving us 40 years of your time, your music, and everything that you have given us. Yes. So there's a lot of groups that came out when you guys did. Why are y'all still here? <laughs> a lot of hard work. A lot of hard work. 1978 was the formation of New Edition, right? Two years of blood, sweat, and tears before I even got in the group, right? Rehearsing daily, two hours a day, at least five times a week, right? 1980, I joined the group. Oh, yeah, let's yeah. go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then another three years, right, of constant consistency, practicing our craft, so that when the opportunity presented itself, we were prepared. And that's the thing that I think allows us to stand the test of time. And y'all can clap for that. That's what I'm talking about. Anyone else? No? Well, after oh. I got my first taste of my first welfare check, I couldn't stop. It was just, <laughs> it was too good. Mm -mm, 40 years later, I'm still getting my welfare check. Okay. <laughs> but I think, honestly, we, you know, we owe it to you guys, for real. I mean, Absolutely. since we've come out, we've seen so many other artists come and go for just various of reasons. But you guys have held us up for 40 years. I mean, even though like we didn't put out a record every year during this time span, but you guys continue to show up at our concerts, buy our tickets, and were there for us every time, whether we had a number one record on the chart or not. So we owe it all really to you guys. So thank you. Speaking of your thank albums, you haven't put out a record. Do you feel like you want to or, or is there a need to? Because there's really y'all y'all are still selling out arenas and everything. So do you feel like you need to put out another album or do you even want to? Well, with music, it's it's um it's difficult, you know because we are solo artists also. There's a Johnny Gill album out every year. There's a Ralph Tresler <laughs> album out, you know. <laughs> we take, some of us take our time. Some of us just put albums out every year. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, we are working on putting a new edition album together and uh, getting it out to the people. We love to hear that. So speaking of that, because you guys have had such immense success as a group and have had incredible success apart also, so what keeps you committed to coming back to the group? It's the group. It's the mothership. The mothership, you know, guides us to where we all need to be, you know. Um, at certain times, you know, I might not be available or Bib, Bib DeVoe might not be available, you know, um, and you know, we wait, you know, the whole thing is about, you know, believing in the mothership and the mothership is new edition. Absolutely love that. I love that loyalty. So we are 40 years post the release of your debut album, Candy Girl. Everybody was alive then like we were. <laughs> <laughs> So I just want to know what it feels like to be here in this moment, 40 years post-release, and have your own exhibit being debuted at the National Museum of African American Music. Wow. Well, I mean, it, it, it's a blessing. I don't think um, when we started, 
we could see 40 years ahead of us, you know. Uh, I think that it's just working, like Ron was saying earlier, hard and uh, constantly, even to this day, we're constantly working hard, uh, trying to continue to 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 uh, elevate and continue the legacy of New Edition. And, you know, people once, I, there's an old song that Miss Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? And even after 40 years, we're still striving, trying to reach high heights and reach the next level and continuing to try to make sure that our legacy is embedded into the world, into business, and that uh, it can never be forgotten. So with your families, all of you, you know, have children and everything. How are you, how do your children take your success? Are you just, are you just dad, Ricky, or is it, my dad is new addition, you know, type of thing? I'm actually not there yet, so I'm gonna let Mike answer this question. Mike. <laughs> Well, Ralph had kids before me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go second. <laughs> who had kids talk first? About who who had was the first that first? had children? Bobby. 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 <laughs> we saw the movie, right? We Bobby. saw the movie. How Bobby did they take you out? Bobby was a kid when he had a kid. <laughs> <laughs> Just uh, passed. No, they they love it. Just the the um, family unit that we have when you asked about what brings us what brings us back to new edition is that right like um my you know roman hanging out with shy shy you know um they're like a nine nine i'm sorry the, um, i feel like i'm gonna be a part of mike's family like officially at some point because they're gonna get married <laughs> right and they're only five and four years old right now and you know just bringing them to the shows my kids will be up, right? The start of the show, we're coming up in the elevators and they're already asleep. But they remember that they were in the building, right? So those moments that we cherish, not only on stage, but as a family off stage, yeah. are the most meaningful yeah. things to us, you know? And, and I would say back to the question before, I, I thought Ralph was gonna chime in because it's kind of hard for us to talk about the first album where we didn't, put as much time in the booth. So how did you feel making the first album, bro? That was a lot of hard work. Wow. Uh, is my microphone working? The first album was surreal. You know, it's one of those things that we're excited. It's our first time being in the studio. We didn't know what the equipment was. We were running around, just like kind of in the movie. We're touching everything. Everybody wants to, you know, just figure out what this whole experience is all about. But I think um, just learning how the process goes. I always thought growing up that you had to be born on the other side of the speakers. You couldn't you couldn't be in the projects, little young, young kids like us, and then end up coming out to speakers one day. So that whole process was was interesting to me. And ever since then, I've been trying to write and produce and doing a, and re reproducing what I saw Maurice uh, Starr doing for us back then. But overall, it was um it was the best experience that I ever had in my life. I was nervous, but at the same time excited because I felt like we were about to do what all the like Michael Jackson did once. He had to do this process. He had to go through this. Stevie Wonder and Marvin Gaye, all the people that we grew up loving and watching coming through them speakers, uh, listening to coming through those speakers, we were going through that process. So it was very exciting for me to learn that process. And going to the studio today is probably my worst thing to do when it comes to me. <laughs> I'm telling you right now, at this point in my career, it's the hardest part of it all. And I didn't realize that then because we were so excited. It was new for us, and we were about to be on the scene, hopefully. So, um, yeah, that that was my experience with it, Michael Pivens. Yes, good answer, Ralph <laughs> I I would say as far as our kids, it's, it's interesting. I think I said it in an interview. We realized they, they really don't come to the show to see us. They come to see the kids. And sometimes when we're getting dressed in one room and we kind of look over to the left and we see them playing, they all got their cell phones, it, it makes us look at each other different because some of us are each other's kids' godfathers. And that was, that's important for us because, you know, you have to trust somebody if you're not here. And who better to trust somebody you've been knowing all your life? Absolutely. Now, Ralph referenced um, going in the studio and... Um, feel like you want to be like Michael Jackson and things like that. When you all first started your journey, did you say we're going to be like the Michael Jackson or are you like, I just want to get a car? I mean, what was your level of, you know, your level of success that was in your mind when you first started? The girls. Yeah. 
Oh, yeah. uh, the girls? Yeah, it was the girls okay. coming up. Girls, well, we, 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 had to, girls. we had to figure out which jacks little bit of we money, were, too, right? The, the, right? Mostly the girls. Yeah. The girls. yeah we thought we it was going to be a little bit of a temptation slash Jackson right. vibe, yeah. but the, what motivated us was we was going to be able to have the girls screaming and stuff. Yeah. Like that. That's what we wanted. That's and it got to the too far point. Like, <laughs> now you have lots of them. How do you, and you still do, I know. How do you work, thwart that off? Like, what is your biggest New Edition fan 40 years later? How do they act? What do they do? Versus back then, you know? Well, hey, how do y'all act now? I was about right. to say. Yeah. We need to ask them a couple there questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's crazy because we, we got male New Edition fans too, right? Men in the building. Yes. And oh, wait. Speaking of that, Mr. Bivens, I don't mean to interrupt you. Can you stand up, please? He has a look at his tattoo right there on the front. Ah, he's he got, the he's got Michael Jackson joint. prints and New Edition on one arm. Yes, okay. that's dope. And, nice. And and the crazy thing, I think we got somebody from Roxbury in the building too, right? Oh my goodness! From the hometown, right? Right Here. up top. There I think go. I think the part that makes us feel good is we we cherish our candy girls, but as the as the guys were coming to the show and learning the steps and identifying with who they could rock with, it just completes the audience. So now when you look out there, they step in, the women is stepping in, they don't have enough space to dance with each other because they, they're both getting busy. And we just want to tell y'all thank you because, you know, real recognize real. And it just feels good that you feel like, I'm not going to just take my leg to the show, but I like them too. So we want to tell y'all that. That's right, man. That's dope. That's dope. Now, you guys are currently on your legacy tour, and you have your show tonight in Nashville at the Bridgestone Arena. So speaking of legacy, what is it that you would like your legacy to be to your fans? Entertainment. You know, um, we came here to entertain people. We work hard in rehearsals, and and all backstage is, is, is a is about working hard to make sure that we give the best show that we can possibly give. And we've been doing that for 40 years. And uh, I think that that speaks a lot about um, the longevity of New Edition is that we're entertainers first. And we're raising some dancers that are behind us. I just yeah. can see how this hair. Yeah. The young ladies in the middle of the NE I knew girls, that's who they were. Yes. Yeah. Our, our, I see y'all on TikTok yeah. all the time. <laughs> we, we would say that our legacy is going to live through them because the teaching that they're getting on this stage, they'll be able to show some other young girls or go on to do whatever they want to do. And the reason we're here today is a part of our legacy. Like our hustle game is if they don't call us, we're going to call you. So we called to be in the museum. It wasn't an invitation. We said, we're going through Nashville. It's a hot spot in there. Let's leave something behind to continue our legacy. That's right. That's right. Sorry, Rizzo. And the fact that, um, and to add to that, I'm saying, would you want to say something, Slay? Go ahead, Riz. Go ahead. No, to add to that, it's the inspiration. You know, when we come out here and we saw the movie and we see the little kids coming up, being inspired like we were when we were little, like the Jackson era at its prime probably had, well, not the Jackson 5 era at his prime had already come and gone. But we were inspired by listening to Lil Michael and his brothers doing what they're doing. And now we look out here in the audience and we're seeing 10-year-olds, 9-year-olds in the audience with their mom. And they're doing, the, like Mike said, they're doing the routines. They know the words to the song. And I think that that's a big part of our legacy, too, to leave for our yeah. culture that inspiration that you can do it, you know? You can get out here and that's make right. something happen. Yeah. That's right. I love that. I, if I can add, I think... Um, we are blessed. My mom always says we are blessed to be a blessing to others, right? That's right. And uh, people have been pouring into us for 40 years now, praying for us, supporting us, um, just giving us hugs and positive energy when those lights go down and we hear that roar. So to be able to come to these cities and not only extract, but put back into communities and whether that's our resources or our, our, our relationships or even our money at times as a new addition foundation, we're definitely establishing that to make sure we stay connected to people that have been allowing us to live our dreams so that they can live theirs at the same time. So that's what it's all about. Yes, yeah, right. right. Let me just say um, in closing that when it's all said and done, when you I mentioned the name New Edition, 
Uh, I hope and pray that a part of our legacy that would be left behind is that we never cheated our fans. Mm. Even when I, we went through our ups and downs and our, that, that turmoil and the end that we all go through it, and with our brotherhood, we only are standing or sitting here in front of you guys today because of God and because of all of you guys. Right. So let it be known that we never, never cheated our fans when it was all said and done. And we had a word when we was little, Skillsy, before you came and we said, well, we're going to elaborate on that. Elaborate. And our elaboration is the team that works with us. And what they go through to make sure we're on point and that our name is held in high. And when we go in those Bridgestone arenas, we walk in like class, we walk out like class. Cause you know, we get, we get noisy, we do our thing. But I just want to say to them as they sit in the background, everybody thank y'all for um, just pushing us to stay together, to be together and to understand how important it is for us to sit in front of y'all. Because like Johnny said, even on our worst days, we say, you know what, we'll deal with what we're going through, but let's go do it for y'all. Yeah. That's right. And speaking Hold of on. that, wait, everyone wait, wait. is in their 50s, we, right? We cannot let Rick get out of that one, you know. Just a couple words from one of our, the wisest brothers, you know, really in our group and our organization and our family, you know. Thank you, Ron. I appreciate that. Um, I would say... The one thing that I would hope that continues to live on after we're gone is not just our music or the way we entertain, but our commitment to each other, our our perseverance and, and, and you know, just weathering all the storms personally and professionally, um, our faith in God, you yeah. know, with some brothers from the ghetto, from the projects like way back when. And so we would just hope that that will continue to inspire generation after generation and there it absolutely start. will won't it definitely will we're gonna keep it alive honey and being on tour the way that you all are and working out or is it working out or is it second nature because you've been doing it for so long we're, we're older guys we're on the you know we're older it, so what are you doing to to keep that youthful uh concert regimen going on the moves and everything because you still do all the same moves that you did from 40 years ago so how do you hold that up that's, oh. that's Bobby Brown. This, oh. this, this is how we hold it up. <laughs> Lots of been gay. Uh, <laughs> icy hot. Uh, things to make your body feel better after you you are up there on stage <laughs> for 90 minutes. Well, we're going to wrap this up because there's so many people that are out there that want to see New Edition. I'm going to do a real quick rapid fire. I'm going to say your name, ask a question, just answer it, and we're going to keep going and take less than All a minute. Right. We're going to start with Ronnie. Who is the prayer warrior of the group? Ricky Bell. Bobby, who is the first to say, do it again, it's not right? Ricky Bell. <laughs> Ricky, who is most likely to want to keep going when everyone else is ready to retire? Ronnie DeVoe. Oh, I like that. Mike, who's the best cook? I ain't throwing in that towel just yet. <laughs> I'll say, okay, all right, Bobby Brown. Uh-oh. Ralph, who is always on time before time? Ronnie DeVoe. Oh, oh, Ricky wait, Bell. Wait, wait. wait. Okay. It's, a it's a toss between Ricky and Ronnie, man. It's a toss between on Ricky time. and Ronnie. Mike, don't try to jump on in that. Riz, you don't be time. in that BBD car. No, Riz. Like, you're there before time. Huh? You too? I think it's Ron and Rick. Right. We talk about Ron, no addition. We're not talking it. about BBD. We talk about no addition. Johnny, who is the peacemaker of the group? Me? <laughs> uh -huh. I agree. <laughs> I agree. He acts like the older brother. Yeah. Love that. Love that. I and we thank you too, man. Yes, I protect my brothers. Let me tell you. Yeah, he that does. he does. Nothing else matters. And I'll yeah. go down for any one of my brothers. Yeah, he does. Awesome. <laughs> Let's give it up for New Edition, everyone. Congratulations on your induction into the National Museum of African American Music on behalf of our president, Dr. Henry Hicks, and Nay Man. We really appreciate it.